Well, welcome to this edition of the Bartimaeus Report. Uh, it's great to, to be here, and it's uh, great, really uh, a privilege to be able to, to share with you some of my thoughts uh, regarding uh, who the Lord Jesus Christ is, uh, some of my thoughts uh, on, um, on the issues happening in the day. And um, my desire is basically that uh, if you haven't already, and this is important, if you haven't already, uh, you know, uh, repented of your sin and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and that this would be the day that you would embrace him as uh, Lord and Savior. Yes, I said Lord and Savior regarding this. Uh, and be, but before we get into today's topic, it would be also great if you, not as great as if you receive Christ, but it would also be really great or good if you went over and hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, today's video is, you know, really difficult because I don't really enjoy uh, doing videos like this. Uh, I have found them at times not very helpful in promoting uh, the dialogue between Muslims and Christians, but I do think at times there needs to be a response, and in particular when, uh, and it's a, fortunately the group is not well, it's large enough, but it's not over, overly overwhelmingly well huge, and I don't really think it's the majority of Muslims. But there is a group out there that, in their uh, attempts to do their um, dawah, inviting people to Islam, it um, it's really it really doesn't help the dialogue. So, if you're one of those guys that wants to uh, engage in this type of conversation. All you're doing is making people angry. You're not really, uh, you know, you're not really thinking through what, uh, you know, what you're doing. And again, it really doesn't promote uh, dialogue. And basically, this the same old attack on the um, on the integrity and the purity of the Bible. I again, I don't know why you do it, but I came across this uh, this this morning, and I'm not going to name the individual. I think that um, individuals like that, I really don't want to give them a, really give them a following, and really, uh, I don't want to embarrass them personally. At least uh, not on my YouTube channel. Possibly, uh, you'll push me uh, too far on Facebook, and then you will. Uh, I will address you. Uh, I will address what has been said. In fact, I probably have already uh, regarding that. Now, I did make this video earlier, but there was something wrong with the sound, so we're redoing it again. So this is what I came across this morning. Basically, it is uh, regarding the story of um, Lot and his daughters. Now, basically, the narrative is in, uh, Lot has just uh, fled or been rescued uh, by the two angels uh, in so uh, from Sodom. He's gone to Zor, and then you see him winding up in a cave, uh, living with his two daughters. Now, they're isolated. Uh, there's, there seems to be absolutely nobody else around. And uh, in that culture and context, to have uh, children was the most important thing that you could do. It was your, uh, your, it was your posterity. If there wasn't, uh, to have no children, uh, and to be childless was uh, a great shame in uh, in that culture at that time. It was probably one of the uh, greatest shames that could ever happen to you. And so these two women, uh, showing their real lack of faith, decided they would uh, get their father drunk and that they would try to conceive children by their father. And um, so the two... Uh, the two daughters, the elder and the younger, get their father drunk. They have sexual intercourse with him, and they become pregnant, and each one bears a child. Now, these children are a snare to, um, the, uh, uh, to, the children of, uh, uh, to the children of Israel, the Moabites and the Ammonites. They uh, become enemies. Of um, of the ch children of um, you know of Israel, 
and God has placed a, well, say, a, a curse on them. They are estranged, and again, uh, you know, and would ultimately ultimately be destroyed by, uh, you know, by God, uh, you know, many, many, many years later. But, but somehow uh, this individual thinks that um, this story is pornographic. So let's def define what uh, pornography is. Pornography is uh, any form of, um, uh, of visual art, and I hesitate to use the word art, uh, or literary uh, art, or, uh, and again, I hesitate to use the word art, but um, we'll, media may be, uh, media may be, or media may be a, a better word that is designed to uh, entice, uh, I think in particularly men, to sin sexually, either by, uh, uh, either, either by fornication or adultery. And it is really quite uh, hurtful. There is not one uh, portion of scripture that, the, uh, uh, that anybody can point to this, uh, where you, you have this uh, in, uh, in the Bible. Not, not one, there, there's not one uh, portion of Scripture. And if you are so enticed by reading it, then that says a lot about where your mind is at. It shows you that you, you really have a, uh, have a perverse and twisted, uh, twisted mind regarding that. But, Let's look at what the Quran has to say. If you want to talk about something that's graphic and what I perceive as vulgar, we can look at uh, these two verses in the Quran. Basically, it's the, it is the, um, uh, the narrative of the, um, or part of the birth narrative uh, of Jesus. Uh, not exactly the birth, but his, um, his conception. So let's bring this up. And pornography in the Quran. If the story of Lot and his daughters is pornographic, what do we do with this one here? And remember her, that is Mary, who guarded her sexual organ. And the Arabic word here is, now I'm going to attempt to say it, and I'll probably butcher it, but I'm going to attempt to say it. And uh, any of my Arabic friends want to help me uh, pronounce it correctly, uh, please do so. I need all the help. I can get when it comes to trying to pronounce some of these Arabic words. Uh, the only one I'm good at is yalla, 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 which means let's go. So let's, uh, let's go and move on. Farjaha. Farjaha. We breathed into her our spirit. We breathed into Mary our spirit. And we made her as a sign for all people. And so here we, t we see the Quran, uh, the Quran saying, that uh, we breathed into Mary's vagina. Yeah, guys, that's what it says. This one is even a little bit more uh, explicit. And Mary, the, the daughter of Imram, who guarded her sexual organ, far had ja, or vagina, and we breathed into it, her vagina, our spirit. And so we testified to the truth of the words of her Lord, and of his revelations, and was one of the devout servants. And so we see in the Quran that the angel Gabriel blew into Mary's vagina. Now that's graphic, and there's absolutely no getting away around it. Now in some of the Qurans, I think in their dishonesty, they try to, uh, you know, you know, water it down a bit. But uh, the Quran is, you know, is very explicit. So if the story in the Bible is a pornographic, uh, I have to ask my Muslim friends, what are you going to do with this one? Because I find it, uh, you know, vulgar and pornographic. It's absolutely, you know, it, it, to me it's disgusting. Uh, but I hope that the next time our Muslim friends, or if you're one of the ones who want to post and show me pornography in the Bible, you consider these two verses in the Quran. Again, guys, thanks for watching. 
If you haven't already done so, go over and hit the, uh, the subscribe button. And you have a great, great day. And may God bless.